video address of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, many are called but few chosen, 20 September 2023 Anno Domini, the doctrinal and theological discourse of the rightful sovereign pontiff on the subject of the present time situation, the heretical poisons of the ipso facto excommunicated heretics, working tirelessly for their master the devil, and how very few there are true Catholic souls helping the true divine institution Roman Catholic Church to counter these diabolical attacks. This publication touches on the subject of the genuine papacy and the present sovereign pontiff His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, and how these enemies of God are disseminating their poisonous heretical propaganda and deceiving many souls with their fabricated new doctrines, not willing nor able to teach the truth, them, these heretics, pretending instead that God will somehow fix it when he has not allowed these heretical evils to exist in the first place. The ipso facto excommunicated notorious SSPV heretic and impostor to the genuine holy Catholic priesthood, William Jenkins, in this excerpt disseminating again his heretical fabrications regarding the true papacy, the set of Acantist heresy and the sectarian apostate novice Ordo Lehman sacrilegious impostor to the papacy, with communist connections, Jorge Bergoglio. This is the uh, orthodox questioner from the episode on August 8th. I am alarmed that I would say that the visibility of the church can change amidst the proposed Sede Vicante, as this seems like textbook modernism. As Ott describes it, the visibility of the church necessitates a hierarchy. In the Sede Vicante's theory, there is not just a vacancy, but an impossibility to fill those offices since there are no ecclesial hierarchs. How does the visibility still exist when the papacy is not just vacant, but inaccessible? No, nothing I said is textbook modernism. Uh, there's a, an overreaction and a mis at least a misunderstanding there. Um, I'm not saying the visibility of the church is something that uh, is, uh, shall we say, accidental to the church. Okay, It's, a, it's a, a necessary quality of the church. Our Lord established the church to be a visible entity with a hierarchy, no doubt about it. And uh, that cannot disappear. Uh, the fact that, that I'm saying uh, I have, we have reason to question the, uh, the current hierarchy, the Novus Ordo hierarchy, um, and their legitimacy uh, is not to say uh, that there is no hierarchy whatsoever, okay? Um, and that there is no hierarchy possible. The fact that I might say I don't know how God is going to solve the problem is not to say that I don't think there is a there is a solution and he's just kind of reading into it that I'm saying well you've got us into this impasse there's no escape <clears throat> and therefore you're saying it's over right essentially and I'm not saying that because I don't believe that's true and uh, I think that's happening now with people dashing about trying to find a human solution to a very supernatural problem um, so I'm just saying that I know God has a solution to this problem. I don't know what it is, and I don't think this man does either. Uh, if, Fran if there is no question about the papacy of uh, uh, someone like Bergoglio, who doesn't even believe in the papacy, and doesn't actually even believe in the church and wants to construct a new church in its place, um, that, that poses problems too. And again, one might, one might say, going the other way, well, the way you see it is an impasse. The church, if what you're saying is true, um, then the church really is at an impasse, and you've just basically done away with the papacy. And, and you say that a true pope can try to do away with the church. But the fact is, um, you know, it seems that way, and this is what we call a dilemma. And, uh, but the fact is, in this case, we all need faith, and we need the faith that Christ himself it can and will solve this problem. That whatever is facing the church these days is not something either um, outside of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ as though he had no expectation of this. Um, and it's not outside his, his power of control either. He has the power to solve this problem. And it must be solved by grace. So um, now if he were to say, well, how are you saying that uh, the church is in this condition and that there can still be a, an actual functioning Catholic hierarchy somewhere, right? And I would explain, well, I think it could happen this way, or I think it could happen that way, right? But that's just speculation on my part. 
And, um, but the fact is, I know that God can and will solve that problem. Uh, and Christ is faithful to his promises, and I'm not denying any of that. Right? So that we, that we have decided today to uh, publish this is not coincidence because the enemies of the church, as can be seen from the initial uh, excerpt from this heretic, from the illegitimate order of society and past the faith, this William Jenkins, is self-evident that he does not understand the truth and does not understand what way to place. So we will go to our endeavor to uh, present this as self-evident uh, conclusion as it is. So this is um, from the Vatican Council. There was only one Vatican Council uh, in the history of the Church under Pope Pius IX, the Blessed Memory, our prayer sister. Uh, 1869 to 1870, and this is on the from the article two of the Pastor in the uh, on the perpetuity of, of the primacy of Blessed Peter in the Roman Pontiffs. So we will read it. And there's another page of it, but this is involved with doctrine has to be followed in conscience by all Catholics. So that means that if you don't believe this, you cannot be admitted into the church. So. Uh, it says that which the Prince of Shepherds and Great Shepherd of the Sheep, Jesus Christ our Lord, established in the person of the Blessed Apostle Peter to secure, uh, please observe, it says established in the person of the Blessed Apostle Peter to secure the perpetual welfare and lasting good in the, of the Church must by the same institution necessarily remain unceasingly in the Church. Uh, for none can doubt and so forth that it is known to all ages that the Holy and Blessed Peter, the Prince and Chief of the Apostles, the pillar of the faith and foundation of the Catholic Church, received the keys of the kingdom of, of the kingdom from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior and the Redeemer of mankind, and lives, presides, and judges to this day always in his successors, the bishops of the Holy See of Rome, which was founded by him and consecrated by his blood. So this is the first page, and obviously uh, the next page deals with the um, with the canon as it is, and here it is. Uh, it says the can uh, this translation from 1907 on a uh, Whence whosoever succeeds the Peter uh, in this see does by the institution of Christ himself obtain the primacy of. Peter over the whole church, and then on the bottom test the canon that needs to be obeyed in conscience. If then anyone shall say that it is not by the institution of Christ the Lord, or by divine right that blessed Peter has a perpetual line of successors in the primacy of the universal church, that the Roman pontiff is not the successor of, of blessed Peter in this primacy, let him be anathema, that means cursed, excommunicated. So then when we deal with this uh, all these enemies of the church have concluded in their publications. Uh, it's self-evident that um, they don't really understand how is it possible that uh, non-Catholic sects, as the Novus Ordo, does not have authority to elect the Pope because they are all excommunicated. They cannot assemble and uh, start electing the Pope, which is just simply impossible because they are all outside the church. Um, so then uh, we go to uh, the page right here. That's again from the Vatican Council on Matters of Faith. For the doctrine of faith which God had, has revealed has not been proposed like a philosophical invention to be perfected by human ingenuity but has been delivered as a divine deposit to the spouse of Christ to be faithfully kept and infallibly declared. Hence also that that meaning of the sacred dogmas is perpetually to be retained, which our Holy Mother the Church has one declare, once declared, nor is that meaning ever to be departed from under the pretense or pretext of a deeper comprehension of them. Let then the intelligence, they call in St. Vincent of Lawrence, but let them uh, the intelligence, science, and wisdom of each and all, of individuals and of the Holy Church, in all ages and all times, increase and flourish in abundance and vigor, 
but simply in its own proper kind, that is to say, in one and the same doctrine, one and the same judgment. That means that this is doctrine of the faith of the Vatican Council and of Pius IX again, which means that there's, it is impossible to establish new doctrine uh, that is contrary to what the church always taught. That is, it, it is impossible to claim the papacy if somebody has established that doctrine and thus contradicted the Pope cannot uh, contradict his predecessor because why because that's uh, again that's very important doctrine as it is we teach that and define as it is uh, and the church has never deviated from this because our Lord promised to St. Peter, Thou art Peter upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of El shall not prevail against it. And I will give to thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and also thou shalt bind upon it, shall be bound also in the heavens. Whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth, shall be also lost in the heavens. There's no possibility of departure from that, and what is declared infallibly by the sovereign pontiff, by supreme teaching authority, came by the power of the Holy Ghost and his guidance, to that person of the sovereign pontiff, uh, which our Lord confirms, behold I, am, behold, I am with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world, and I will send you the paraclete, and he shall teach you all the truth, and so forth, and he will abide with you forever, and other places, obviously. So it is impossible for a pope to teach heresy and retain the papacy. That's impossible. We have demonstrated before in our previous recordings, so we will put it in here because we have some more excerpts, to play, but we have demonstrated how important it is to follow this, and that there's no way that a person who claims to have priesthood can declare something that he doesn't know how that is played out, because then the Holy Ghost is not with these people, they are heretics, obviously. To recognize non-Catholic sect as Catholic is a mortal sin of heresy and sacrilege, and therefore such people cannot retain the membership in the Church. This is another, this is from the Catechism of the Council of Trent, and now uh, it's uh, regarding the papacy, and we will call down the St. Ambrose in the, in the bottom yellow highlighted. Plus, the St. Ambrose says, should any one object that the, the church is content with one head and one spouse, Jesus Christ, and requires no other, the answer is obvious. For as we deem Christ not only the author of all the sacraments but also their invisible minister he it is who baptizes he it is who absolves although men are appointed by him the external ministers of the sacraments so has he placed over his church which he governs by his invisible spirit a man to be his vicar and the minister of his power a visible church requires a visible head and therefore does the savior appoint peter head and pastor of all the faithful when in the most ample terms he commits to his care the feeding of all his sheep desiring that he who was to succeed to succeed him should be invested with the very same power of ruling and governing the entire church why is sort of a Kantism heresy is self-evident truth not only that it violates the doctrine we already presented in, uh, uh, in regards to the Vatican Council, um, which is in power doctrine has to be obeyed uh, unceasingly, remains the person of St. Peter in the, in the successors in the sovereign pontiff, remains unceasingly in the position of power, with the exception of that interregnum, which is understandable. Uh, we will speak on that subject, how the church today is in the catacombs and the church does not have the, the means to elect the Pope because there are no more true cardinals. So God had to intervene and so forth. We touched on that uh, uh, at the end when we played uh, uh, the excerpt. But also that our Lord says in another place, there shall be one fold and one shepherd. That means the possessor of the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It is a heresy to claim what the city of counties claim. And then uh, there's, uh, these enemies, they are divided and of course, by their own examples, they are teaching, publicated, 
doctrine that is that has no bearing on what the church has always taught. So then we will touch on the uh, what has taken place. Uh, it was uh, John 23rd from Kali. This is from Council of Trent, as can be seen on the screen. And uh, John 23rd from Kali uh, in uh, 1962, and we have uh, shown the, uh, the, the excerpts of the uh, Pontifical Roman, which they published and uh, by which they severed themselves, including Rokai, who signed it and promulgated it, which is invalid. Uh, in the beginning of 1962, Anno Domini, and some indications there are that may have been printed even before that. It was printed in preparation, but then uh, the official publication was then. Uh, he violated this uh, Canon 13 of Session 7 of the Council of Trent on sacraments in general. We will read it. That's the highlighted. Uh, in the greenish type color. If anyone said that the received and approved rites of the Catholic Church want to be used in the solemn administration of the sacraments may be contempt or without sin be omitted at pleasure by the ministers or be changed by every pastor of the uh, churches into other new ones, let him be anathema. That means cursed and excommunicated. Not even the Pope has the authority to change the received and approved rights of the sacraments. That means that if there is a, if there is a substantial change of the sacraments that invalidates the sacrament, and moreover that person ceases to be in possession of that Kaiko office, we will demonstrate that very quickly because that's uh, that's uh, canon law, which the heresy, heretics uh, very seldom or never like to uh, quote, and this is from 1917, Code of Canon Law, Canon 188. The Latin is in the center, in that pinkish type color, that's from publication that we have, and the uh, translation is on the, underneath, Canon 188, point number 4, at 1917, Code of Canon Law. The office of a cleric becomes vacant by way of tacit resignation, by the force of law, ipso ure, it says right there in the uh, and that uh, underline uh, that means by the, by the force of law and by the fact the act is committed ipso facto uh, and without any declaration it says right there sine ulla de declaratione si clericus if a cleric has publicly defected from the catholic faith that's the uh, blue highlighted part the point number four so if a if a cleric becomes heretic, he loses automatically the cleric office, which includes the Pope. And papacy is the fide, which means part of the Catholic faith. Uh, it's recorded in the Holy Scripture, that's the power of the keys. And so, if a Pope became become a heretic, uh, which was the case of Roncalli, then uh, that would be a heresy if we retained the, the papacy, so it, it's automatic, it's by divine law then it, otherwise the gates of hell would prevail against the church which christ our lord does not permit a person and by cut by this very by the council of trend we have demonstrated wrong Kyle lost the papacy he attempted to change divinely instituted sacraments we have demonstrated why is it so in um, uh, in our previous recordings when he changed the uh, the episcopal consecration ceremony and makes those three bishops take turns in um, in administering it, which is in itself uh, more than heresy and denial of the uh, office as it is because they were instituted by um, by Christ our Lord, obviously. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, find it. This is um, The suspend from 1896 Anno Domini is the actual translation of and and in Latin, and um, it shows on the right hand side the English translation, and the highlighted part will go to the um, will go to um, will go to find the. Um, the close-up because it's more uh, fitting for our purpose here. 
uh, which is here, 1896 Anno Domini, and that's the Episcopal Consecration Ceremony, and this is the essential part, which it states, then the consecrator and the assistant bishops touch with both hands the head of the one to be consecrated, saying, so and, the word and means they all three get through, there's three bishops uh, required for that, uh, one suffices for validity, and it says, and the assistant bishops, so all three together, and they all have to say, receive the Holy Ghost, as if a spiritum sanctum. Then the, the highlighted part, it says, the imposition of hands with prayer is the essential right by which episcopal power is conferred. What the Roncalli did is uh, he changed it and makes them, those three bishops, take turns, which is, uh, that sacrament cannot be repeated. It's canonically and theologically, it, it's, it is heresy. Um, it's right here. Um, this is from, uh, in fact, from Society Sempires the Tent. Their publication, the ceremony uh, in 1962, which is invalid. So, and then what uh, Montini instituted afterwards, which is then the, uh, what the ceremony is afterwards. So we go to the close-up, bear with us a little bit. So this is the, published by SSPX Heretics. This is the close up so uh, we can plainly see that it says then the consecrator touches with both hands the head of the ordinance saying receive the Holy Spirit this is done in turn by the bishop co-consecrators who not only must touch with both hands the head of the ordinance by saying receive the Holy Spirit and so forth intention and so forth we will show um, the actual actual print of um, what the um, what we have already recorded in another place but to put it in here because it it's truly important so then uh, these are the Pontificar Romanum of the 1891 Anno Domini that's the true and then the 1961-62 that's the heretical one published by Ron Kali. And then uh, we have uh, this front of pages to, to see the difference. So again, on the left is the original one in Latin, both in Latin, but uh, it says um, uh, the word et means and. Then the cons consecrator et uh, is very in small uh, no, uh Letters so we can't read it on the screen, but it says the, the, the same thing what we said uh, and the consecrators, the bishops touch with both hands uh, the, the, the head of the, of the bishop of like can say as if a spiritum sanctum. In the, on the right hand side, that's the version from Von Kai which makes it invalid because that sacrament cannot be repeated. They, they take in question but the sacrament took place because one bishop suffices for validity. So as it says successive, which means successively or in turn. Uh, this is done in turn, obviously, which is uh, impossible. So that's, that's why Roncalli excommunicated himself because and lost the papacy because precisely he violated the constraints of the Council of Trent. Uh, on sacraments in general, uh, Session 7, Canon 13. Uh, so obviously, um, this, is, this poses a grave, grave problem because then how to continue with this? How is it possible that the church continue. Um, so then, uh, obviously, uh, the church would not be visible any longer if the city of Countess had their way, but that's impossible to happen. It is absolutely in impossible that the church would be without the uh, right of sovereign pontiff. 
obviously. So then now we have some more excerpts to play and uh, we will do so. It is important to realize that uh, humanly speaking the election of the Pope is impossible because Roncalli was the papacy. The only one who can name the cardinals and the, the cardinals are the only ones who can assemble in valid conclave and elect the Pope. The only one that is, is the Pope himself. And since Roncalli became heretic and then died a year later in Spain for in hell, uh, he lost the papacy and uh, his so-called successor was only uh, excommunicated heretic Montini, uh, who continued the damage until 1969 where he had six Protestant ministers uh, to help to institute the uh, uh, the, the Novus Ordo uh, Mockery of God, which is no longer Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So this is a um, screenplay from um, a video that we have produced. This is from uh, Montini. Uh, when he tried to change the, or define the sacrament of holy orders, uh, the ordination to the diaconate, priesthood, and, and uh, episcopal power. And this is from the Episcopal Consecration Ceremony. It contains two heresies. He claimed that <coughs> the uh, Holy Ghost was proceed from God the Father and was given to God the Son, which is a heresy. They approved it and uh, uh, tried to change it and so that's what makes them heretics. We'll play an excerpt from uh, uh, the Novzo sectarian uh, layman uh, uh, heretic. So this is Montini with six Protestant ministers who instituted this Novo uh, abomination which is not a mass because it's a reenactment of the Last Supper, which is heresy. That's Montini, that's a close-up Montini with the Protestants. And so there's no, and then he was forced out of, out of Vatican prior to that by Pastor 12, and Pastor 12 found out that Montini had dealings with, with Stalin. So then we will play uh, an excerpt. We have, uh, we are doing so reluctantly because it involves a novice of the sectarian. Uh, but just to explain what's taking place, uh, this excerpt was recorded in um, and the whole video was a debate which is forbidden by um, by canon law. And see if we can find the, um, the the actual. Um, copy of it, uh, it's uh, this one canon 1325, that's right here. Catholics shall not enter into any dispute, dispute and conference or conferences with non-Catholics, especially public ones without permission of the Holy See or in urgent case of the ordinary, which today is not really. So, but uh, it's self-evident that this, this cannot exist, but the Sid Vecantis heretic, uh, Donald Sanborn, uh, was, who likes the proper guidance of the Holy Ghost as it is, uh, was involved in this. And so the following excerpt is on that regard, and that's self-evident, that he does not understand or is not guided by the power of the Holy Ghost to explain to, not to, to, to be to be precise, a true bishop would not be involved in debating uh, non-Catholic sectarian who's a layman about the Catholic faith and, uh, and allow himself, the bishop would not allow himself to be participating in something like this. Because the bishop has to teach, like we as the Southern Party have to teach, the, 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 uh, which we have quoted from the Vatican Council, the doctrine of the faith and so forth, is entrusted to us, so we have to safeguard it. So we can't just be engaged in debating somebody who's not even Catholic about the Catholic faith, a sacrilege. That will be a sacrilege. But this Sandbar was involved in it, 2004. Uh, and uh, it's self-evident that there's audiences, public debate about the Catholic faith, about the, what happens with this Novosota sect. So let us 
before we put, uh, play this excerpt, we will inform the, what the, our proper judgment on this is. In the history of the uh, Roman Catholic Church, there was only one Vatican Council that was under the Pope Pius IX, 1869 to 1870. Whomsoever dares to say that there was another such council, the second in number, is therefore disregarding the fact and the doctrine which have we, we have presented and makes himself a heretic. Therefore, we teach and define by our apostolic authority that there's only one Vatican Council in the history of the Church, and the Pope Pius IX, our predecessor of blessed memory, and those who dare to teach, uh, say otherwise uh, that non-Catholic sect, and by them they were non-Catholics because they severed themselves from the unity of the Church by uh, what Roncalli has done to the Sacrament of Holy Orders, and that they uh, were supposed to know that that Sacrament cannot be repeated, and that it is impossible that, and according to Canon uh, um, 13, Session 7 in the Council of Trent, to institute other, uh, other uh, uh, to institute new uh, sacrament as it is, that it is impossible uh, that that person would retain the um, uh, uh, would retain the um... okay we have found it okay the sacraments we retain the, the papacy because he became public health he, he substantially changed the sacrament of holy orders the consecration this is from the 1917 court of canon law and it's plainly seen that uh, uh, we will read it the yellow first and then the below that it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith and ask for them, unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. Canon 731 and Canon 732. The sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and orders, holy orders, which imprint a character, indelible character, which is marked from God himself, which is how important it is, cannot be received a second time. They cannot be administered. So self-evidently, Roncalli, when he make, made him made those three bishops take a turn, he, which is that's the matter. There's only one imposition of hands of bishops in that during that whole ceremony of episcopal consecration, that makes that sacrament to be administered a second time, and the third time because there are three bishops, one the principal consecrator and the co-consecrators, and that's what Roncalli did. That's why that sacrament is no longer valid. That episcopal consecration ever since 1962 is invalid. Roncalli severed himself from the unity of the church by doing so, lost the papacy, and that's it. All the chain reaction began, and that's why the church was ever since in the catacomb. And that's why what's following now is the disaster as it is, because those people are completely blinded. So we'll play that excerpt and then comment on it. Sanborn is to say to reject this pope as a heretic to reject the popes since John XXIII as false popes. On what authority? Now he could say, I have no authority. He makes these statements as if he is the infallible pope. On what authority can he say that Vatican II is heresy? You're relying upon all his inferences by these pamphlets he, he picks out. Yes, there are many problems in parishes. Yes, there's immoral behavior. Read church history, we've always had this. But it's, it's far more serious to call the Pope a heretic without substantial proof than he hasn't provided. And uh, where is the heresy? I don't see it. It's saying that there's elements of truth and holiness and that the Holy Spirit can make use of those uh, true sacraments outside of the visible structure as means of salvation. I don't see where that's a heresy. Dialogue is a good thing. Because they, they, in the Vatican II theology, confuses the Episcopal consecration with the jurisdiction. The, the jurisdiction is the power from Christ to rule the church. You could have a, a vicar apostolic or something with that power. The, and, and you become, uh, under probably the rules of Pius XII for the conflict, you became the Roman pontiff. Uh, even before your Episcopal consecration, as long as you intended to be consecrated. The church, no father of the church, sanctions schism. Schism is a great evil. 
It's a mortal sin. You are following a schismatic bishop. That's a grave evil to break and sunder the body of Christ. Consider this. Outside of the church, there is no salvation. But if you're outside union with the Bishop of Rome, you're outside of the Catholic Church. Dr. Pastigi. Well, <clears throat> if I may, I'd like to ask a question of His, His Excellency. Um, and first to note that there was Albert Pius, a Flemish theologian, who said the Pope could never be a heretic. Bellarmine states that this position is probable, though not absolutely certain. That's Bellarmine, and then he, he defends another position as a, as a speculative question. But to get back to Bellarmine, he quotes this, the passage of Pope Nicholas I, which is uh, sent to the Emperor Michael in AD 865, and it's repeated in Vatican I's pastor, Eternus, the famous line that the Pope occupies the first see which will be judged by no one. Could you explain to me how you are not violating this papally mandated principle, also affirmed at an ecumenical council, because you are judging the Roman see, which the Catholic tradition says will be judged by no one? Okay, two things. One is, Innocent III put an exception on that. He said, except in the faith. Okay. Secondly, that refers to establishing a, a judicial tribunal. We are not doing that, and that's why, I mean, to get into another more refined aspect, we, uh, we say that Materialiter is the Pope, that he has a, a legitimate designation to be the Pope. He could become the Pope if he removed the obstacle to it, uh, however, to the jurisdiction. Uh, so therefore, we are not judging him, we are not saying with any kind of juridical authority that he is not the Pope. We are simply saying, when you double column, what he is saying, it comes up as heresy. It comes up as discontinuity, and we are merely making the private judgment that his teachings are not in conformity with the teachings of the faith, just as we would with anybody if you did or anybody else in this room did. So this is from uh, the Council of Trent Catechism of the Council of Trent. Uh, to give the sufficient evidence that uh, this Novus Ordo sect does not have um, valid ceremonies as it is because by very fact that they are offering the um, reenactment of the Last Supper, they are not giving sacrifice to God because, and let us be will read, uh, that highlighted and underlined Section, we therefore confess that the sacrifice of the Mass is one and the same sacrifice with that of the cross. The victim is one and the same Christ Jesus who offered himself once only a bloody sacrifice on the altar of the cross. That's, that means that there has to be, we signify that and during the Mass, there has to be cross on the front face of the altar. So obviously if there's no cross, there's no sacrifice because then it does not signify the intention of uh, of those who uh, want to say the mass, and plus they have to have the true priesthood and so forth. The bloody and blood and a bloody will victim is still uh, one and the same, and the oblation of the cross is daily renewed in the Eucharistic sacrifice in obedience to the command of our Lord. This do for a commemoration of me. The priest is also the same Christ, our Lord. Ministers who offer this sacrifice consecrate the body, the, the holy mysteries, not in their own, but in the person of Christ. This, the words of consecration declare, the priest does not say, this is the body of Christ, but this is my body. And thus invested with the character of Christ, of the priesthood that is, he changes the substance of the bread and wine into the substance of his real body and blood. That the holy sacrifice of the Mass, therefore, is not only a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, or a commemoration of the sacrifice of the cross, but also a sacrifice of propitiation, by which God is appeased and rendered propitious, the pastoral will teach, and so forth. That's the dogma of the Church as it is. 
that Christ our Lord instituted on the, at the Last Supper is self-evident, but that it does not represent the Last Supper. So then uh, it's uh, self-evident that uh, what St. Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians, that's right here, uh, chapter 11, verse 26 to 27, uh, this shows and so forth. As often as you shall drink for the conversion of me, for as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the chalice, you shall show the death of our Lord until he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of our Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of our Lord, which proves the real presence, which means the miracle of transubstantiation. So anyone dares to say otherwise, then they are deceiving, they are disseminating heresy, as it is, which is the case of this Novozor sect. They do not have that. That's why we have illustrated they Montini had six Protestant ministers to try to administer that part of abomination, which is not the Mass. And that's how they severed themselves from the unity of the Church, by way of excommunication. It's a facto. They lost their Kaiko offices. That, was, that happened to Laura Roncalli in 1962. But this is just a confirmation that it became a non-Catholic sect. And of course, their ordinations are invalid because they're not ordaining people to offer sacrifice to God, but to mark him by a Protestant ceremony, which is no longer pleasing to God. It's an abomination. It's a heresy. And, and it is idolatry because then they're giving divine honor still to a piece of bread and wine and chalice by genuflecting in front of it or bowing or so forth, in, insinuating that that's, no matter what kind of commemoration they say, those people in pres and, and the attendants they truly are considering as a, as a ceremony as honoring God, and it is not. It's highly displeasing, it's highly abominable, and, and they will pay to God for it. And those churches, because that's a godless, that means horrifying ceremony, those churches are desecrated. And we have spoken about this on different, in different recordings. So then... Uh, of course, there's a lot more that could be recorded. But when uh, people like in the beginning, this Jenkins, or the like the SSPX heretics, uh, who uh, simply do not uh, wish to um, teach the truth, as for example, um, the SSPX is, uh, we, we are like just uh, looking at it as it is. Um, right here that's from SSPX from Holland and they sang the mass in a Novozoto run uh, retreat center in in Holland and so it's plainly seen what it is so we will go to another screenshot which illustrates what kind of place it is um, that's the same place so then there's Novozoto table and one more. We have it on video also in the sense of, um, of what kind of abomination it is. That's right here, that's the Novozoto table. So that place is desecrated, it's no longer. And the SSPX is truly saying the 1962 missile in there, so that's self-evident from that screenshot. Uh, there are many more, many more such situations as this. This is nothing new. The SSPX is 
they are heretics. They truly recognize non-Catholic sect as Catholic, and they have forfeited everything there is, uh, including that they never had valid priesthood, and then who Archbishop Lafayette was truly, and how they uh, do not have valid ordinations. Like, for example, this one. They even, we have recorded in another place, but just to put it in here, it says without saying any prayer, and they consider this as the, and, uh, um, as the essential form, which is not, uh, because that prayer has to be mentioned, prayer of ordination and so forth. This is Bernard Pillay. And we have dealt with this uh, in several occasions and so forth. So this is nothing new. Uh, so in their case, this just simply, uh, they are tied with the novice of the sect and therefore they are, they are lost. It's, uh, it's truly as bad as it is. So, um, they have just right here, that's from St. Mary's, Kansas. Uh, they have uh, on the front face of the altar, they have a, a, a symbol of a heart, but it has to be a cross. We have read from St. Paul. Um, of course, show this. they have, that's what it looks like, and they have the uh, representation of a lamb, which is forbidden by church law to, that's not our Lord, and it's forbidden by church law to represent O oh Lord, in any other but human form, that's ever since the Second Council of Nicaea, uh, under Pope Hadrian I, 787 Anno Domini, it's in the Acts of Second Council of Nicaea, and that's, uh, oh, that's forbidden. So our Lord has to be always represented in human form. Uh, so to represent the Lamb above the altar, or behind the altar, where the sacrifice to God is supposed to take place, is an idolat is idolatry because that representation of that animal gets gets the divine honor and so forth, which is horrendous. That's that's in Kansas, in Saint Saint Mary's, Kansas. Uh, so obviously, uh, this is this is horrendous what these people have done. We have some more pictures of this. This is nothing, nothing new. Uh, so obviously that's during their ceremony of the when they attempted to consecrate the the church with 1962 Pontifical Romano, which has changes in them uh, that are different. I've even published a whole video about this subject. We're just posting it in here just to show what the title of this uh, of this publication is. Why is it so? And very few are, few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Let's turn out to like again over there. So this is all for nothing. 39 or whatever million of dollars spent and still God won't come. So, in closing, the wives is titled so because the church, where we are, obviously, the, the Roman Catholic Church in our presence, in our, under our pontificate, is in the catacombs, and we don't have any other means to continue but by the help of God and by His divine grace. And then, 
there are many more aspects of this and we have posted so many data and so forth but this this is important that how the city of councils are wrong how the society impacts the time these legitimate orders how they are heretics and many others there's no visible order as it is that it would not be in uh, a more sin of heresy separate from the unity of the church and so forth and uh, we have documented this in times past as this so-called resistance uh, to the society of past and uh, they are the same thing um, we have so many other data it would have to be a long very long publication but that's not our intention today why is the title so because precisely many are called by our admonition by our recordings by our doctrine as it is uh, to protect the divine deposit of faith to truly to admonish those who claim to be Catholic to re reconsider where they stand with God whether they are truly members of his church or not and at this point they are not and that includes the whole world today basically with very few ex exceptions and those who are selected by our Lord to be the elect to receive the uh, Show the absolution and, and so forth to be admitted, admitted into the church. At the end, God will punish this world as it is, and it's already coming. And so, those who think that they can just plainly set aside their eternal salvation and think that they will just uh, maneuver themselves into uh, obtaining the mercy of God, uh, they are mistaken. And obviously, the devil will keep them in his hands because they are his slaves, as heretics. On the other hand, those who choose strive to be Catholic, who will do nothing else but to be Catholic, God will help them, lead them to us. That's why we are publishing these things to help people to recover themselves from the snare and uh, yoke of Satan, as it is. And we have attempted to publish this as a live stream yesterday, and it, the devil was sabotaging it because uh, of the difficulty of our connection and so forth so that's why we're recording more thorough publication today on the subject to summarize really which I have done many times before on the subject of all these so uh, all these heretics as it is to show to those who may see it that surely the only way to be Catholic is to be united with this Holy See to come to uh, be reconciled with the church to truly or to be admitted for the first time in their life obviously what most the case will be because if people are brought up it is not a Catholic sect and obviously they have to be admitted and if they have the heresy and be posting the link to that uh, publication that deals with that subject more thoroughly and so forth needs to be done what is prescribed as, as the proper procedure in such cases of receiving uh, people from heresy which that's and uh, they have to admit be admitted upon examination what they believe and that means they have to study the catechism namely we will require the catechism of the Council of Trent and then have to be examined which is not that difficult but at least to have the rudiments of the faith in them and to discard everything that the sect and these heretics ever thought because otherwise they will be remaining in that heresy and that's inadmissible in that case they will not be admitted also such things as we have that case uh, such things as uh, bodily uh, prints like tattoos and all this uh, earrings on, on and so forth on uh, on special mail and so forth and bodily tattoos that are inadmissible that uh, so that has to come off before you can be admitted and such like things like we haven't touched on subject of marriages and so forth that's another question that we have to consider consider completely if there are such things but it's self-evident that these heretics they do not possess the faculty from the church to be able to have valid marriages so that's that's a that's a soul such a such a horrifying situation as it is and we will probably have to do another publication on that subject we don't know when exactly but uh, it's probably pressing depending on the situation as it is that should suffice today we have many more aspects that we can touch on but this is sufficient today this dogma divinely revealed but, um, uh, outside the Roman Catholic Church this true Catholic Church and without practice of the Catholic faith which is nothing else but Catholic tradition there's absolutely no salvation all heretics infidels or 
apostates or schismatics or such uh, enemies of the church like communists, socialists and so forth, atheists. They all burn in hell and will burn in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. It will not be one of them and the time is running out, God will punish this world um, and only the church will remain as we are divine institution established and founded by Christ our Lord God himself.